We understand that one or, there. one or two things to do this morning. Like that. Yes, I was just saying the record is complete. It never fails. Anytime I have a meeting with a congressman, I'm behind schedule for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> to say nothing of the national, national agenda that <laughs> meets with Congress. Did you be able to put some fires out on uh, their, their concern about the uh, Central America? Well, uh, this was a pretty supportive group. This was uh, this included the people that have been down there and have just returned, and um, we've just we've got to do a better job of making the American people realize what is at stake here and what's going on. You know, I think you're getting point close, and uh, I must say that U.S. News cartoon which you were reprinting. I don't know if you saw it this week. It's got this little mouse named CIA and Congress standing up on a chair in terror <laughs> behind the chair and under is this great big uh, ferocious beast named uh, Red Aid for uh, Central American uh, rebel, I mean governments. It's, uh, it's a good cartoon. Um, we uh, hadn't mentioned the, the only thing we wanted to ask you about high tech was the fact that Jim Cook's piece on the uh, in Forbes about the fact that the the uh, whole economy, the recession wasn't just a recession, it was a shift in the nature of the yes. economy to high tech and there's been a lot of talk about whether or not uh, the, uh, the the government should play a part in having a national plan as to our efforts out of the Japanese and uh, I was wondering if you were uh, uh, being influenced or had been approached on the <laughs> On that kind of an approach. Well, no, I, and I don't think that the that the Japanese success is particularly due. I know there's been a great deal of talk about it to government relationship with Japan. I think, very simply, one of their greatest advantages is the much higher personal savings rate of the Japanese people over ours, and the pool of capital that they've got available there that can be used for investment uh, in. Uh, a lot of high tech and improvements in general business. Now, I think our industrial plan is one that's across the board to stop government from being, as it was for so long, an adversary of the private sector. Uh, view, for example, of our tax program to to make it easier. Uh, I want an extension of the 25% tax credit for research and development for business and industry so that mm. they can plan ahead and know what they can do. Um, there are things government uh, can do in this, but they're aimed at all of industry because not only do we want and know that high tech uh, is going to, uh, well, our own labor department says probably be the biggest provider of new jobs uh, in the future. but technological improvements in the regular industry, basic industry uh, in this country uh, to help them. So some of the things we've done, we've, uh, well, we're, we're asking for a 17% increase in our own federal spending for research and development. Uh, I am proposing a, a plan and incentives to see if we can't lure bright young <coughs> new PhDs into teaching of science and engineering instead of going out in there into the high-tech world themselves. Um, we, as I say, want an extension of that, uh, of that tax credit that was in our program, but all of the, the program was to uh, make it more possible for business to develop, to do it business on to its expand. Own. And then, of course, because high technology is where uh, we can be the most competitive in the world market and then everything that we're doing to try and open up trade and uh, reduce protectionism and so forth, uh, we're continuing on that. So our industrial policy is one of across the board helping business and industry have the climate they need sure. in which to, uh, to go forward. On, an, on another matter, Mr. President, uh, I hope, uh, I hope some of uh, the people that we read in the paper are giving you economic advice about the necessity of uh, slowing down the money rate and increasing interest rates so that the recovery doesn't get out of hand. I hope they uh, 
Uh, I hope you're not. I hope they're not saying the same things to you. Uh, no, that <laughs> just, uh, the <laughs> that's the first thing that has just come to my attention. That, it's going on, and uh, no, that's not my view at all. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't think we need to worry about the rate of recovery, no. uh, about snuffing it out, because it's getting out of hand. Not it's, at it's, all. it's a healthy one, and it's going to yes, it's going to uh, progress. But I, I, it's alarming to read that these people are in, <laughs> around you think that it's the recovery is out of hand already. Well, those are <laughs> those are those usual unnamed sources, <laughs> white house sources. I don't know whether they even exist. <laughs> And I certainly don't know who they are, or they wouldn't be White House sources anymore. But you're not, you're not in favor of a uh, return uh, no. to high interest rates. No, and uh, and I'm not in favor of the things they're talking on the hill of wanting additional tax revenues. Right now, we've got a recovery going, and uh, I can't wait to veto any effort with regard to taxes, and will. No, I think you're on the on the right side of that one, both soundly and also happens to be politically sound, I think, too, which is a happy coincidence. It isn't always that way, but I think this one is. Speaking of politics and steady, Mr. President, I hope, uh, while uh, we all uh, uh, hope and some of us believe you'll run again, I hope you won't make any announcement about it until uh, until you have to, because I think it might, uh, uh, I it, think it would have a lot of practical effects that wouldn't all be good. I hope keep I, keep us on tender hooks as long as the decision I'm is I'm very positive. much aware of that. <laughs> Either way, to become a lame duck uh, by saying no uh, would perish the thought. That's right, right would paralyze everything we're trying to do. To say yes would then render everything that I try to do viewed as political, and the other side would mobilize against it. So, so no, I'm. Uh, besides, campaigns are too long. It's just ridiculous. We don't. I think this is why fewer and fewer people are voting all the time. I think we've satiated them. They're never free of political campaigning going on. Yeah, I, I, I must say, I think in terms of uh, the Democratic Party, the fact that so many are running so hard so soon. Uh, will uh, create a certain amount of boredom as it relates to them while the curiosity continues as to when you'll uh, <laughs> publicly uh, uh, make the statement we all well, hope I mean, and expect and uh, would be disappointed if you didn't. But what I'm saying is I hope you don't get pushed into any early time, <laughs> any early announcements. I'm in no hurry. Good. At good, all. good. As long as the answer is positive, Mr. President. Right. <laughs> uh, incidentally, apropos earlier what we were talking about too, and about this, that part of our trouble is only or our trouble is is recession, but a large part of it also is we're in a transition. In the decade of the '70s, the labor department statistics show that out of the new jobs created, eight out of ten were in service industries. Uh, so you have plans to to. Uh, Proposed legislation or take moves to make it easier for the services to compete in export markets or uh, to ease their, their expansion here? I mean, they don't have the, the tax advantages, you don't have the, the depreciation and so on. That, uh, the services. Yeah, the services don't, uh, that a manufacturing, a heavy manufacturing company has. So that in a sense, the, you know, the investment is skewed in that direction. Um, well, now, if, if I understand you correctly, what you're asking about is anything that we're doing with regard to export markets. Well, the one thing was, of course, the, that a bill that we created for export trading companies so that smaller companies could come together without being in any violation of the law and take advantage of, of uh, export trade where previously they've never done it before. Uh, we're doing everything we can, and that was a large part of the talk at Williamsburg. And I must say, all of the heads of state there all agree that we're all guilty of too much protectionism now, and we've got to work further and harder to you rid ourselves of that. You certainly came out of that smelling like the rose garden. <laughs> I think it was neat that everybody predicted it was going to be either a waste of time or blow up and so forth, because when you came out of it with perfectly rational uh, findings and uh, widespread support, it was, it was wonderful. I think it was... Uh, well, you know, the, the previous things and the two that I had attended before, it, it virtually was that someone had written the communique in advance of the meetings, and the meetings therefore had to... Uh, like a script. <laughs> ...match the script. And so people made presentations, but there was never any really freewheeling discussion. So this one, just from the very first moment, there was no communique, and the first moment we got into a trade like, tr or a subject like trade, and then 
free for all around the table. And we never left a subject until we had a consensus on it. We didn't take a vote and say, well, three dissenting and four in favor or anything. We, and we worked it out where we agreed on the things that we could do. And I must say, all the rest of them were very generous in their uh, well, they were that very, they, very impressed that you were not dogmatic about anything. <laughs> you, 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 you know, that you uh, valued their thinking. I mean, the output was, uh, you know, you've got a consensus, which nobody predicted. Speaking mm -hmm. of that, Mr. President, uh, um, do you see any value apropos of the uh, script all being written out ahead of time? At some point in the months ahead uh, of uh, meeting with Mr. Underwood? The, I don't see it in, in this year unless something arises that we can't foresee. Uh, certainly, uh, we're supportive of the idea if there is an agenda uh, where something can be accomplished. The one thing that I think would be very bad, and yet some people just have are a, talking about it, is to go to have one just to get acquainted, because people's hopes get too high in a meeting of that kind, and then to walk away with nothing is too much of a letdown. Now, if uh, in the months ahead and in the early part of the of the year, if uh, we can come to some meeting of the minds on uh, practical things to discuss and that offer some possibility of improving the situation, mm. fine. Do you, do you see? It? Do you have any inklings as to whether or not uh, anything's going to come out of a, an Afghanistan in the way of a withdrawal? Well, Mr. President Zia certainly seems to be yeah. trying hard and effectively, and is a good friend to us, I think, a useful friend in Pakistan. And yes. As a mediator, so to speak. Right now, uh, uh, there is no indication of any weakening, if any, anything. The, the Soviets have strengthened their forces there. Mm. And, and that is something that clouds the horizon. How do you? How do you sit down and start talking about other issues? Well, this total violation of everything that uh, every nation is pledged to in the Charter of the United Nations uh, is being violated in what's going on there. And it can't be ignored. Speaking of withdrawals, do you have any indication that uh, Syria is, uh, again, vis-a-vis -vis Russia's aid, is uh, going to... Uh, even make token evacuations in Lebanon? Well, we're going to work for more than that, and we're going to continue to work uh, on that. Uh, this, this country, Syria, uh, they were one of those at the very first that said, when everyone withdraws, we'll, we'll, withdraw, withdraw. we'll all withdraw. And now they're violating that promise on what pretext, I don't know. But we're not going to give in. We're going to continue working with our friends among the Arab nations uh, uh, who are all on our side on this and opposed to Syria's taking the stand they're taking. Do you feel it's principally because of the Russian uh, aid and the closeness oh, that I Syria is? I think Russia is pushing so hard in there. And this is sort a, of her backdoor entry to the, yeah. to the table, so to speak. And this is a situation we have to, uh, we have to look at as to what the answer to that it seems Might that be. since Mr. Andropov took over, the Russians have been stirring up trouble everywhere, whether it's Swedish subs, Syria, Vietnam, Central America. Yeah. They seem to be stoking it everywhere. When you mention <coughs> Central America again, you of the media, there is such a story that isn't being told. For example, after my April 27th speech, the polls indicated that a great many Americans did see El Salvador and Central America in a different light. But the constant drumbeat of the opponents to that is such that the polls have gone back practically to where they were. Now these congressmen that have come back have some fascinating stories to tell. They talk to 16-year-old boys, enlistees in the El Salvador Army. Why? Why are you doing this? And these kids said to fight for our country. They're, this isn't a thing in which there's a lackadaisical feeling on the part of the people. They feel as strongly as they felt when they voted a year ago last March. But they have other stories because they talked to others on the other side. And they had high-ranking uh, leaders of the forces that are backed by the Soviets and the Cuba in this tell them that this, is, this revolution is for real. 
and that this revolution is aimed at all of Central America. They stated that. As a matter of fact, one of these men said to some of these congressmen, one of these high-ranking officers said to the congressman, make no mistake about it, we'll be at the Arizona, New Mexico, Mexican border sooner than you think. So what, what, what do you think it'll take to arouse the... I think more, I think that, that it is winnable on our side, but not with the grudging penance that we're, or pittance that we're getting from Congress, which is just sort of uh, helping them bleed to death down there. What we need is to give them the weapons, the training, the, there's no question, but that the battalions that we trained were the most successful that they had. And we need more of that, that kind of training. And uh, the bad American people have got to know that this is to our national interest. If for no other reason, if they don't want to consider a hostiles being at their border, but look at it one other way. We're talking about if those people succeed, those Cuban and Soviet-backed people concede, or succeed in getting their kind of dictatorships there, you can look for anywhere from seven to 10 million refugees no, no here in the United States. Do you see signs that the Mexicans are beginning to wake up to the nature of what's happening down there? Yes, I think they are. I think, uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, because they, they, they'll move faster. They, they can uh, be effective. Uh, yes. they, they're going to have their own problems if <laughs> they have yes. now, economic. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you get any yeah. indications that... Uh, uh, well, the Contradora is trying to get that is, they're called those four mm -hmm. countries that are banded together. Uh, I will be meeting uh, for too long uh, with some of those people, but we, we support them and what they're trying to accomplish. But the thing we must recognize is that these are not just some peasants with muskets embattled farmers out there in the, in the hills. These are professionals. These are uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, some of our people down there have met high-ranking officers they met in other countries under other circumstances who were there now uh, in the so-called Sandinista government, which is nothing more than... I think it's mask is huh? dropping more and more. I yes, mean, the, it's a surrogate the facade for, is, is, uh, for the whole is being more and more exposed. I, I, yeah, the polls may be down, but I think uh, the more and more you see pictures of the, I mean, Libyan four living planes full of arms. Yes. I mean, the, the idea that this is a, a, a peasant rebellion. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's just it doesn't wash. Hopefully. More Soviet ships, actual Soviet ships, have unloaded cargo in Nicaragua so far this year than did in the entire year in an entire year past. I, I, just these few months. I think that public opinion, as before World War II, it's slow to turn after the Vietnam. The, yeah. the, the analogy doesn't hold, mm -hmm. and the proximity uh, <laughs> creates a whole yeah. different matter. Uh, but I think that your own steadfastness in regard to it is uh, uh, going to, uh, uh, the public's going to follow behind. Uh, and so of media, uh, basically, because uh, it's becoming just more and more apparent. This is not uh, uh, Mr. Big trying to snuff out poor starving peasants who want to be done with dictators. I mean, that, that scenario is washing less and less as the Cubans and the Russians become more and more open in their support of uh, the same. Yes, system. and we're not talking about, as they keep harping on, on we're not talking about American military forces. As a matter of fact, uh, President Magana said he would not ask for them. They can do it, but if we give them the practical help that they need, economic help as well as uh, military, and economic help because uh, they have a negative uh, growth in gross national product because of the assaults of these rebel forces, destroying their industries, their power plants, and their their infrastructure, uh, creating additional unemployment to where they've got 
uh, people that have to be cared for because their jobs have disappeared. The farmer that can't work his soil, uh, work his farm because of the of the guerrillas, and uh, the they're playing political games uh, up there. Uh, some members of the Congress with this thing, uh, trying to make it that uh, they're on the wrong end of the stick as far as the basic public opinion. As it becomes aware that it isn't. Uh, a power ploy, it isn't a Vietnam, it's a, a real confrontation uh, by uh, uh, the Soviets and the Cubans uh, on our flanks. And I think that's becoming more and more apparent yeah. thanks to the efforts of the administration. As principally. long as you don't uh, let the opposition in Congress make the administration gun shy and making the points that have to be made. Oh, I don't think that's this fellow gets gun shy too quickly. My trouble is, I go out there and I make a speech to somebody and then I see in the evening news 20 seconds of the speech and nothing of importance in that 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we want to uh, be of some help to you by not taking any more of your time, Mr. President, except to tell you that uh, uh, it's a very high batting average for us that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, in, in the magazine and ourselves, we couldn't be uh, more supportive uh, in, uh, I, I would say 90% plus, well, and uh, 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 on the, the minus sides are minute compared to the plus sides, and Mr. President, we look forward to your second term, and we look forward to your not announcing it until uh, <laughs> <laughs> So I won't even respond to those words. Right. That, that, no, I that hope we covered everything that, that you, uh, you wanted. You have indeed, and we thank you for, for your time, Mr. President, and uh, um, what we can do to be helpful is we intend to, because we... Uh, so thoroughly agree with your thrust and your right. thinking and your philosophy. It's a very refreshing thing. I think it must be refreshing to you to find out how many more people are. And I think economic recovery uh, that is underway uh, with any blips uh, is, what we said many months ago, is going to be stronger than people anticipated. And the fact that it is proving stronger, it shouldn't alarm the people that uh, underpredicted. I'm glad that being twitted, you're some of your advisors for having uh, underestimated, but they shouldn't get alarmed that it's out of hand. No. Recovery is not out of hand. No, uh, no. But it's uh, it's, it's, it's a healthy, sitting in a healthy there, state. Right. right. So incidentally, with that, with all that unemployment, you know what? No one has mentioned. The other day, I heard one of the people up on the hill, one of the candidates, I think it was. And uh, sounding off about, well, there's probably 20 million unemployed if we only knew of the people that have gotten discouraged and so forth. I wish they'd look, take a look and see if it's really 10 million. Because how many of the so-called unemployed are in the underground economy that is avoiding taxes? And they aren't hurting at all. No, that's, <laughs> well, Mr. President, case for another tax cut rather than uh, <laughs> what the Democrats want to do. Well, Thank you, Mr. Eric Smosky, good wish, sir. And uh, we, uh, as I say, look forward to uh, equally great progress in the second. Well, and I appreciate all the